what is the law of attraction? Today, I break it down in a way that anyone can understand and use in practical terms. The law of attraction is incredibly popular today with books such as Think and Grow Rich and The Power of Positive Thinking, discussing the topic and bringing the principal idea to the masses. It's considered a part of a new thought philosophy, though many principles and ideas come from ancient religions, ideas and texts. Now, it's important to note that there are many skeptics of the law of attraction, but the purpose of this video isn't intended to discuss the debate surrounding this, though perhaps I'll look into it in another video. Instead, I want to explain some of the basic principles of the law of attraction in a way that's practical for people to apply. The biggest issue and challenge for people delving into the subject today is that they struggle to comprehend how the law of attraction works and as you delve deeper it's easy to get lost down the rabbit hole as you try to get your head around new thought concepts and the theoretical principles that the process is based on. So I want to focus on first what the law of attraction is, citing the two best definitions of the principle I've heard from Sadhguru and Dandapani. First of all, what is the law of attraction? Well, you've probably heard the term where the mind goes, energy flows, right? This is the basic principle of how the law of attraction works too. Where you focus your energy will be what manifests and becomes reality in your life. One of the most obvious examples of this is when we want things in life, whether it be wealth, an expensive car or a big house. The law of attraction isn't about wishing for these things and they magically appear, but instead is about focusing energy in pursuit of what you seek. Sadhguru explains this extremely well in a story he tells in a man going to a temple to ask God for a house. In this story, God, being the divine and non-judgmental creator of all things, won't specifically give energy towards one specific pursuit to grant a wish. So why will this man get the house in this example? Well, the moral here is the man's faith means he's removed doubts and uncertainties in his mind, his mind therefore being clear and concentrated. Now because the mind is focused on the desired outcome, the man will naturally seek to find his home or at least the opportunities to get one. This works in the same way that Tony Robbins often speaks about when speaking of the reticular activating system in his seminars. During these, he asks the audience to search for all items of a certain colour, say red, in the room that they're in. After 10 seconds, he'll ask the audience to tell him of all the items in the room that are a different colour, say blue. Obviously in this moment the audience struggles to list out all of the items in the second colour and it's because they focused their energy to find all of the items that were in the first colour. This goes back to the original point, where the mind goes, energy flows. So if you focus all of your energy in pursuit of owning a big house without letting doubts or hesitations creep into your mind, what are the chances that you'll get the big house? Significantly higher, right? After all, it's only basic logic that dictates someone who focuses on one specific thing will be more likely to find opportunities in the pursuit of that thing than someone who is distracted. From here, you can introduce the element of time, which is things don't just instantaneously appear in the law of attraction, it will take variable amounts of time. And Sadhguru explains this extremely well, saying there's no purpose in life if you were to get everything you could want instantly. Now going back to explaining the law of attraction, one of the best examples is Nandabani's explanation using a garden. Think of water as energy, which helps grow flowers and weeds. So if you focus on watering flowers, the flowers grow and the weeds die without it. If you focus on watering the weeds, they'll grow, but the flowers die instead. If you water everything indiscriminately, both the flowers and weeds grow. The same principle works in life. If you seek opportunities, then you'll find opportunities. But if you focus your energy on negative outputs in life, then you'll attract negative returns. Now at this point, if you're finding this video of value, then please let me know by leaving a like, sharing this with your friends and family, and subscribing for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon as if you don't, YouTube may not notify you of the latest videos. So how does the law of attraction work? Dandapani explains how the law of attraction works using the work of one of the most important scientists in history, Nikola Tesla. Tesla was a visionary whose theories still bear massive relevance today and said that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. 
So we have energy which we can use towards different purposes and as already identified, energy is non-discriminant. It can be used to be both productive and destructive. So how do frequency and vibration come into play? Energy takes up different forms, working at different frequencies and vibrations to fulfill different purposes. Imagine it being fluid and unfixed, similar to the famous Bruce Lee quote, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now using this idea, then the bunny explains how this is relevant to the law of attraction. Think of radio waves used to send music to people's homes. Here, the music might play clearly when tuned in at the frequency of 44.5. However, tune in on 44.4 and some static might be introduced, though the music is still audible. 44.3 sees static become more prominent and at 44.2, the music is gone, with just the static left. In the law of attraction, the idea is to get your energy and put it in frequency with what you pursue. This means using your energy in a way that's focused towards your goal, thus becoming in frequency with that goal and taking form in the shape of the goal. Then the bunny goes on to compare this to how James Bond has been portrayed by various actors throughout history, and while each was unique and different, they all maintained the essence of the character, because the actors would sync their energy to that of the character. They take on the characteristics of who they're portraying and thus use their energy to become the character, not themselves. So why is it we know that a law of attraction can work? Medical journals have supported the benefits of having a positive mindset. We know that the principle of positive thinking works according to the medical field. For example, there are medical journals written on positive thinking stating that Findings offer promise of positive thinking as an approach for psychological interventions designed to promote life satisfaction. Again, going back to what the law of attraction is, it's not just about wishing for things in life as a form of positive thinking, but rather focusing energy towards an opportunity seeking mindset that has a positive outlook in life. Number 2. Neurologists have found visualization creates a better future. Neurologists have conducted numerous studies which show that visualizing is valuable in helping people make reality come true. They say the ability to construct a hypothetical scenario in one's imagination prior to it actually occurring may afford greater accuracy in predicting its eventual outcome. Now, in the law of attraction, one of the key cornerstones is to visualize the reality you want to manifest, meaning you need to have a clarity of mind and purpose. Studies have also shown that this works in other aspects of life too. For example, a study was conducted testing how people improve in a specific skill through visualization. One such test was for making baskets in basketball. Three test groups were set up to develop their skill to make baskets. The first group didn't have to do anything to try and improve their skill. The second would go all out and shoot baskets daily, while the third wouldn't physically practice, but instead were told to visualize as vividly as possible hitting the baskets every time in their mind. The key with the third group was that they hit the baskets every time. No doubts, no failures and no hesitations. The results were interesting. Obviously the first group was the worst as they didn't do any practice of any kind. But what researchers found was that the second and third groups created the same number of connection between neurons in the brain, with the group visualizing actually outperforming the group practicing when put to the test with action. What this shows is that where we put our focus is as important as physically taking action, which is why the idea of matching frequencies and vibration in the law of attraction is so important. With this in mind, when you're able to put in place practice both mentally and physically, imagine how much you increase the possibilities of succeeding in a given endeavor. Number 3. Psychologists encourage the use of affirmations. Affirmations are another key tool in the law of attraction and the activity is well supported in psychological literature. A researcher at the University of Exeter has published theses on constructive repetitive thought. They found that people who consistently tell themselves that they can meet a goal are more likely to secure a positive outcome. Affirmations are also proven to help with recovery from trauma, improve anticipatory planning, aid treatment for depression and boost physical health. Number 4. Mirror neurons help to explain the spread of good vibrations. 
We've already discussed about matching frequencies with the desired outcome. The way in which we spread good attitudes towards other people and attract reciprocating feelings can be partly explained with the reference to mirror neurons. For example, when someone sees you showing a positive attitude, this same response is mirrored in the brain of the observer, which in turn can draw them to act positively towards you as well. Studies on the amygdala, or the brain's emotional center, show that we induce feelings of fear or anxiety in others if we ourselves are fearful or anxious. So put in place the foundations of the law of attraction in your own life, because doing so could manifest the life you seek to live. I would love to know, do you believe in the law of attraction? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it of value, please share it with your friends as we aim to help people live the life they wish to. Thanks for watching.